Hey guys! So, if you've been looking for a help desk ticketing system for your own home lab for your friends and family, you can check out Zamod, which is what I'll be showing you today, actually. So Zamod is pretty cool. It's your basic help desk ticketing where you got your dashboard, you got some tickets over here where you can see overview. So we got assigned tickets, unassigned tickets. We got a ticket that's like, please help, um, as well as just, you know, hey, you got, hey, my computer isn't working. Have you tried restarting? No, why would I do that? You know, you got your notes, your replies, you can add attachments and all the cool things that you would get in an actual like help desk ticketing system, but you can set it up and self-host it yourself so that you can just play around with it essentially. So let me give you kind of a bit of a rundown here. So you can see that we have a ticket here, but say for example, you are a user and you want to create a new ticket. So on the left side, I have my admin user account that essentially can see everything. But on my right side, we have a just normal user. So we can click and create a ticket that says, I am creating a ticket for help. Please help me. And you can see that it's pretty simple to create a ticket. Um, and sometimes, you know, these are the annoying ones where they're like, hey, there's not enough information. You have to request more. So if you were an admin or um, an agent uh, um, dealing with help desk tickets, you can go over to your overviews and you can see that there are unassigned tickets, which you can pick up and you can click that you can see, hey, we see this ticket. So now we can see that we can take ownership of this, which is my Dragon Dragon user. We can select priority and we can select state. Um, so when we're done, we can close it and it will be pretty much what you need. But we can edit a note here right now and be like, what do you need help with? And then you can hit update in the lower right hand corner, which you can't see, but you can because my face is in the way, but you can hit update down here and then you'll see that you want to set it to public. Um, you can just set up notes that it, other agents can read, but in this case, we want the user to be able to see it, right? So we'll hit set to public. And then if we go back to our user account, you can see that we have the note. So essentially, this is like your normal kind of help desk replies um, without like too much to it, just pretty simple, pretty basic. Um, and you can respond back, I need help setting up my keyboard, right? And you can do the same thing, hit update in the lower right after you're done, and you will see that the note uh, shows up. So it's pretty simple for communicating with tickets. Um, there's obviously settings that you can do with user account creation, so you can create your users and agents, um, as well as a few other things. But for the base default thing for Zamod, um, doing help desk ticketing um, for either your home lab or for a, a job, works out pretty well, honestly. So now here's the fun part. So now that I've shown you kind of what Zamod can do, let's show you how you can set it up in your own home lab or in your own network. So the first thing that we want to do is set up a DNS entry. So in my whole pipeline, I got a GitLab repository which has my zone file for DNS. So with this, we will essentially edit the zone file. So we will update it and we'll update the serial and then add a new entry. So in this case, because I already have one set up that's called Zamod, we'll do Zamod 2 just to make it a little bit different um, so you can see the full installation process. We all set it to 166 as just the next IP. So let's add Zamod 2 and we'll commit that. So with how I set up my GitLab pipelines, and if you're interested, feel free to check out my automation playlist series in the description below, um, it will essentially uh, upload this file to my bind DNS server and then reload the zone, which will make it so that essentially I can resolve it, which is great. So now I got DNS set up. Next, I need to set up my Ansible uh, playbooks repository to be able to target this new VM that we're gonna create um, because it will essentially create a new VM and we want to be able to target it. And we'll do the same thing. So we'll add Zamod2 here. And with that, um, this will essentially allow me to use it in Ansible and create this machine um, because I have actually a lot of playbooks in my uh, repo here that will essentially create my VM, um, create certs, install Docker and Docker Compose, which is what we'll need for this because we'll be using their Docker Compose file to essentially set it up um, and all the other things like patching and everything in here. So. After those two things are done in my repository stuff, I can go to my AWX dashboard, which is another tool, um, which you can find in my home lab series playlist in the description below too, on how to create one, which will essentially 
give you a graphical user interface to essentially use and run an Ansible playbook but as a template. So in this case, what I did was I created multiple uh, playbook template, job templates. So like create me yam, install doc, doc and compose, and then I combined them all into a workflow job template. So create VM, patch, Docker, certs, nginx, and they'll run all those playbooks sequentially. Um, so let's double check the jobs here real quick so we can see everything was successful in syncing from GitLab. So let's run this job. So what we'll do is add uh, host name will be Zamad2. The new IP will be 166. Um, then we'll name the VM, which will be what's in, in Proxmox, which isn't that big of a deal. And then what we'll do is the proxy address. So this is HTTP localhost 8080. And I'll show you how you guys can find that out um, once we start doing the Docker Compose configuration. So we hit next, we hit launch. We let it run, and then once this is finished, we'll continue going. All right, now that it has finished setting up the VM, what we can do is SSH into it. So we'll SSH into zamod2.dragon.local. <clears throat> we'll enter the password in for the root user, and then we can see that we're actually in the VM. Um, so the few things to note is Docker is installed. So we can do like doc commands. Um, Nginx is also installed too. So we can see that the Nginx config is looking at localhost 8080. Um, so all we really need to do now is get Zamod running um, through their guide. So what we want to do is look up Zamod um, Docker installation, I believe. <clears throat> So install with Docker um, for their documentation. So we don't, we're not using Portainer here, so we can skip that section, but we will use their Docker Compose. So we'll clone the repository. So let's do a yum why install git because we don't actually have git installed uh, because we just using a minimal image right now. And then we will run the command for the git clone. So this will pull the repository. So in here, we can see that we all CD into the directory and we can see that there's a doc compose file. So let's just take a quick stab at this real, real quick. We won't need to make any edits um, in this file, I don't think, but let's just take a look here. So you got a lot of services, things that are running. Um, and yeah, taking a quick look, we I don't see anything that we would uh, change. Uh, well, we could change the time zone, but um, we can do that in the .env, I believe, based off how it's set up. Um, and then in here, there should actually be um, grep for 8080. Yeah, so nginx port will be 8080 is what it's running on. So then let's take a look at the documentation here again. Um, adjust env, env dot dist, we'll copy that. So copy dot env dist to dot env, vi dot env. And then we can update things in here. So like if we didn't want the Nginx port to be 8080, which we do, um, we could update this. But what we'll want to see is, um, let's actually hard code the version. So we actually only just, we don't want um, the hyphen 29. I ran into some weird setup stuff when I did the, the hyphen um, latest patch version. So we'll just do 641 in this case. Um, and then let's see if there's anything else in here. It doesn't look like there's anything else that we'll um, edit unless we want to add the, that time zone, but that's not that big of a deal in this case. So we will save that. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for the things that you need to configure for this. So then we can do a Docker Compose up so we'll do a docker compose up hyphen d for detach and then docker compose logs follow so that we will essentially follow the log. So the few things to note while this is um, pulling all the images and running is this also uses Elasticsearch on the back end for some of their search functionality. So if you are running this in a VM, you'll want to make sure your VM has at least like four gigs of memory. So I usually, my, my template is default like one CPU, one gig of RAM. So um, as part of the create VM, I actually upped it to four gigs of RAM. Otherwise, Elasticsearch will actually run out of memory and then won't start correctly, um, which is kind of a pain, honestly, at the end of the day. Um, so that is one thing to note while you're doing it. So now you can see that it is starting the container. There will be a, a few configuration stuff 
stuff. So it will be configuring some database stuff. So you can see Postgres in here is ready for startup. It will be doing some other things to initialize the database um, and initialize the other services to connect. So you can see that there's some like database thing uh, queries and going on in here. So it won't actually be ready until all this is done, which might take a few seconds to a minute or two, depending on what hardware you're running. So we will give it a, a few minutes here. And then once this is all kind of looking good, we will uh, show you the web GUI. All right, so now it has finished doing all the prereq stuff. So we can go to a browser and we can go to the link. It was told us to actually set up a new system so we can set up. We'll enter the name of the user and the password as well. And then we will create our administration account. Then we can create the company. So we'll do like Dragon Inc. And then we'll skip the email notifications. We'll skip the email stuff since we're not really gonna do the emailing things for our home lab. And that pretty much gives you the intro to how to set it up. Now there is one thing to, to note is you will want to go to settings and then go to system and then change the HTTP, HTTP type to HTTP. Um, because we'll be using a reverse proxy with our Nginx. Because if you don't, if once you log out or try to log in with like a new user, it will error out with some like CSF, CSRF token. Um, and this is the essentially work around to get around that. So that's pretty much it. Um, and then you can do a Docker compose down and then Docker compose up to do the restart. So, but other than that, that's pretty much it on how you can get it set up and start using. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.